Hi everyone, welcome back to our cart series. Uh, in the last episodes, we have been working on the items. So I want to just pause there for a second because what I want to do is go through how to do drifting. So let's go ahead and jump in and show how to do drifting in a cart. So the drift in the cart game is not like a drift in real life. So although you could do it with a physics based thing, we don't want to do that in this case because we're going for this cartoony uh, cart racer type effect. So what we need to do is we need to set up our cart to basically we're faking a drift if you're going to get that Mario Kart style of uh, movement. So the way this works is first of all we need to go ahead and edit the cart. <clears throat> because the way the cart's going to work is we're going to attach it to a pivot point and then turn the whole cart based on that pivot point. So it's not really turning. What we're doing is just making it look like it's turning. So for that to work, we need a sync component to make all these things match up because at the moment, they're all separate pieces. Okay, the wheels, the cube, yeah, all, all different. So we need to make a sync component. So I'm going to click my box, go to add sync component, and we'll call that one um, pivot, whatever. And then we need to now attach all the elements to that pivot point. So let's go ahead and attach the uh, wheel here. Oh, wrong one. To the pivot, there you go. Uh, take that wheel, attach the pivot. Pivot. Cube also needs to go to the pivot. And there, uh, so all you should have left is when you minimize them, the spring arm and the pivot. And the pivot inside of it, it's got all the wheels plus the main chassis of the cart, okay? So functionally, it shouldn't change anything like it should still work as we've been working on it okay nothing's different so what we need to do with the car is spin it on that pivot point so for that to work though we need to set up the inputs so let's go ahead and set up an input for our cart here so i'm going to add a new action and we're going to call this one drift and I'm going to make this on the keyboard. Drift. Um, we're going to make it do the left shift button. Okay. And if we're doing it with the uh, gamepad, we may want to do like a bumper maybe. Um, so we do left bumper. Uh, not bumper, shoulder. Don't they? Yeah, left shoulder. Okay. Obviously, Pick whatever you like. So with the input now in there, we can add it to our graph. So I'm going to go in here and do, do IA drift. And in here, I need to do a start and a stop drift. So we're going to do two functions. Start drift. And stop drift. And if we go back to our event graph, we're just going to put these on here. So they're going to go on the start's going to go on started. And stop is going to go on cancelled and completed. So in either case, whether you cancel it or complete it, it's going to stop the drifting. And the reason why you want it separate uh, functions for this rather than just tacking on here is because there may be numerous reasons why you want to stop the drifting or start drifting, in fact. So maybe you hit an oil slick and you want to make it drift a little bit. You can do that there. Or you can do it so um, if you take damage, you stop drift and you return back to normal. So we've got this bit here done. Let's go inside our start drift. So a couple of things we need to do. First of all, we need to modify our steering multiplier. So at the moment, we have a variable for steering multiplier. It's set to 2. And I basically want to give myself a greater steering. So I'll start drift, I'm going to put that in there, I set to four, so double what it was before. And then we're going to need to know if we're drifting or not. So uh, this will be useful for various other calculations in the project. So let's add a variable for that and call it is drifting. And drag that in. And we're going to set that to true because we're going to start drift. So the next thing is we need to do is work out which direction to turn the cart, okay? So based on that pivot, what way we're going to turn it, left or right? And that's going to depend on which way you're steering. So what we're going to do here is we are going to create another variable in here called drift 
got a rotation. And that's going to be, as the name implies, a rotator. And I'm going to set that over here. Now, I don't care about X or Y, just the Z. So I'm going to split this. So I access just the Z. And what we're going to do here is work out which direction we're going. And the way we're going to do that is by getting the steering input and figure out which way we've been turning the car when we push to start drift. So to get that value, you just do IA steer. You get the enhanced action value for IA steer. This gives you the raw input that you're getting from the steering control. And we want to know if we're going to the left or to the right. Easy way of doing that is using a sign node, as that would turn negative 1 if you're going left and positive 1 if you're going right. I then want to multiply it by a factor to make it a bit more strength in the rotation, because we don't want it to rotate by 1 degree. That'd be pretty boring. And then I'm going to put that value of 25 into the drift rotation Z. Okay. The next thing we need to do is go into stop drift. So basically stop drift is going to undo those various things. So put in steering multiplier and set that back down to its default of two. We're going to turn drifting off. And we're going to set the rotation here to nothing. Okay, so complete inverse of what we just did in start drift. Okay, so that's setting the values up and ready to put them into uh, the actual calculations for the movement of the cart. So what we're going to do is we're going to be modifying our steering more so than anything else. So let's go up to our steering over here. And currently we've got the action value from the steer being multiplied by the steering torque, acceleration input, and steering multiplier. And it's that steering multiplier that's going to get affected by our drift that we're doing. So we need to work out what is going to be the steering value of when we're inside of a drift. So let's move that side here. And the thing we're, we're changing here is this multiplied value here. That's going to change. And that will change based upon a new variable we're going to set up, which is going to be how, like, the drift steer amount. So I'm going to promote that to a variable and call it drift steer. And I'm just going to delete the get there, and drag it out and do a set. And plug that in like that. Okay. Now we've got to calculate the drifting steering of this. And what I want to do is I'm going to take the action value here. And I need to work out what is the raw amount of steering I'm doing here. Because I need to work out uh, basically how, like the strength of the steer. So in the action value here, we're going to do abs. And that will just ignore if it's left or right. It will just do, this is how much you're steering by. And what I want to do here, though, is I want to pick the larger number. So the idea being is that we can drift into something, but we can't slow down the drift or turn back the drift easily. We need, like, once you start doing a tight turn, your steering will lock into that tight turn. So we're going to drag in our drift steer, and we're going to do a maximum node. So do max. And what that will do is it will just pick whichever one's the greater number. So if we are steering at a value of 1, and we are now uh, drifting at a value of 1, and then suddenly I change to a steering value of 4, that will pick then the 4 value rather than the 1. Okay, And then we're going to override the drift steer with this, so it will then lock into that new high number. The next thing we need to do is we need to multiply it by the strength of the steer. So what is actual steer amount? So I'm going to drag that out and multiply this. And I want to get my drift rotation so I know which way we're going. So I'm going to get the drift rotation and split that. Because again, we only need the Z. And to get a direction, we need to just sign the float. Negative 1, remember, is left. Positive 1 is right. Now, we only want it to do this if we are drifting. So that's where that boolean comes in from earlier. I'm going to drag that out and use a select float node. And plug that into drift steer. The bottom value for here, the multiplier, sorry, not bottom value, the multiplier value is going to A. So if we're drifting, we want this calculation to the steering value. 
because we're modifying the value to basically pick whatever the highest number it is currently. But if we're not drifting, we just want to use the raw number as it was. Okay. Now, the last thing we're going to do here is probably clamp the values as well. So let's just move a little bit over here. So between the select float and the drift steer, we're going to do a clamp. Because otherwise, we don't want it going spinning out of control. Let's do a clamp here of negative 3, because we've got to count for the left side, and positive 3 for the right side. Okay, so that's the multiplier of the drifting amount. Okay. And there you go. So when we, if we are drifting, we're taking in the amount I've moved by, picking which is higher, the current steering drift or the new input. And then we're going to multiply it and work out which direction we're going to be turning it. And we, we have to do this because it, I can't do a maximum with the raw negative value or positive value because obviously negative value is smaller. I want to just know what is the highest absolute number. And then switch it back to its negative or positive input there. Um, yeah, and that goes into select float to determine which one we're picking. And then we're clamping it so we don't we can't do like any sort of oversteering, so to speak, and then put that into drift steer, which will then lead feedback loop into here. Okay. Okay. So that'll go through that. And we're all good there. The next part is we need to go and add on our tick the rotation element of our uh, our cart. So let's check it onto add something on our tick event. So I'm going to do it in this calculate acceleration. And what I'm going to do here is drag out my scene component, my pivot, and set relative rotation. We're going to turn it on the spot. It's just a visual, basically. It's just going to change the visuals of the cart. So all we're doing here is we want to do an R interp2 because we want it to smoothly turn, not be like jumpy. And we're going to put in the drift rotation as the target. And the current value is the pivot's current rotation. So get relative rotation. That'd be the current value. And then delta time, we're going to do delta world seconds. And then we'll do an intercept speed of, say, 3. Obviously, adjust that as you wish. Okay. Now, I think that's everything. Let's just check it out then. So if I hold down Shift, we can, and whilst turning, we can drift turn like that. Turn the other way. Now, there's one last little element to this, and that is in Mario Kart, drifting is used as a way to sort of boost your character a little bit too. So we're going to do that as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back into our cart and go to that start drift uh, function. And at the end here, we're going to call our boost cart function that we made before. We're doing boost cart. Put that in there. And the speed modifier is going to be based upon our drift steer. So let's drag in our drift steer. And I'm going to do the absolute value of that because I don't care about which direction we're going because we're just changing the speed. And then I want to make it a bit smaller because obviously if we beast it too much, it's going to be nuts. Um, and this maximum of this will be is three. So we don't want it to do it three times speed. That'd be crazy speed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide that by 10. So if it is a maximum of three, it'll become 0 0.3. But I want it to go higher. So I need to add onto it a uh, value of one. So if I'm maximum turning, it will give us a maximum boost of 1.3. And time-wise, we'll just do one second. Again, tweak as you wish. So now, when I drift around the corners, we get a little speed boost. That one's obviously because I hit a boost pad, but if I go around here, what that do is it stops the the problem of having it so your car, car is actually slowing down whilst you're turning around corners. You want it to like, keep up with its current pace a little bit. So it just handles that offset a little bit.
Yeah. So all you got to do is you can put on some Niagara effects and other things and to complete the effect. There you go, a little deviation into drifting and explain how that works. Uh, we're going to go back to our items in the next episode. Um, but hopefully you can tweak around the drifting, change the values as you wish to get feeling just right for what you want to do. And by all means, play around with the logic behind it. So hopefully I've explained it enough and you can understand what's going on here. All we're doing is taking a steering multiplier value and basically locking it into one direction or the other and then giving it a little boost. That's all. Okay, so um, yeah, we're going to go on to back onto items in the next episode. So you can find that episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. You can find all my videos early from just one dollar a month. A massive thank you to all our patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. Thank you for watching. Make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.